How much do you know about what happened with Iran? Do you know a lot about Iranian history or no? Okay, so w- what really happened with, you know, uh, uh, how the Hezbollah, how Khamenei, Khomeini, how these guys came in with the Shah, you know, the revolution that took place with the Shah, how, how, how much do you know what happened there? I know that uh, I think it was Mossad, Mossadegh. Mossadegh was before the Shah. Yes, yeah. but but he was going to nationalize mm-hmm. uh, BP, mm-hmm. their oil fields, mm-hmm. and so there was a somewhat of a sponsored coup, mm-hmm. which ousted him, put the Shah in place, mm-hmm. and um, the the Khomeini definitely got help from the Soviets. Uh, to stir up and to oust, right? Because they hated that there was an American friend on their on the border of the Soviet Union, and uh, I think the U.S. largely let the Shah hanging um, and didn't give him the help. Um, again, the, C- the CIA in the '70s was a very troubled, weakened, um, hamstrung organization between the Church Committee and and um, Stansfield Turner. Just kind of threw out all the all the sharks, and they were left with minnows. And um, what a what a strategic error to let it go. Destroyed an entire region. Now, a question for you. Let's just say hypothetically. And you know what? Someone just told me hmm. that the Shah converted to Christianity before he died. Did he really? Yeah. I've heard that story. Yep. Yeah, this is his last book he wrote before he died, Answer to History. Um, I just had his son on a couple months ago. We, had, we did a three-hour podcast. Reza Pahlavi? Yeah. yeah, we had him on a very, very... Longest podcast he's done. We had one of the best conversations. Everybody around the world was talking about it in the Iranian community. But I got, I got a question with this one. Say somebody was to call you, okay? And they said, hey, um, Eric, we would like to hire you as a consultant, and we would like some ideas. If we wanted to um, bring democracy back to Iran and... Whether it's a revolution on, to change on, the regime, man. come on, man! How would you go about doing you, it, Eric? What? Of course, I've thought about that. Do you think I'm going to talk about it on camera? Give me three things. I mean, you know, it's just this. First of all, we have a small podcast. Probably 17 people will watch this. Okay, <laughs> and the 17 people that watch it, they're all going to be Iranian, just so you know that. <laughs> but if if I know you can't, do you in your mind know? Like, do you? You know exactly what I do. You know exactly what you you would do. Absolutely. <laughs> Who else knows? Ah, some of my friends. Okay, good. So what I'm saying is... In- so if I get clipped, the, it, the mission will that's continue. Not, that's not what I'm saying. Sure. What, what I'm asking is like... No, look, think about this way. Reagan took office in 1981. Mm-hmm. And he sat in the Oval Office because we'd had a policy of containment for 35 years. And he said, enough. We're going to fuck the commies. We're going to go at them economically, politically, culturally, socially. In all ways, we push back. I remember that speech. Fuck the commies. It was a... Uh, no. Uh, I get what you're saying. I'm look, with you. No, but Maybe I, he look, said it behind closed doors. Watch yeah. my podcast, yeah. Off Leash with Eric Prince, and, you, and see Jack Wheeler. Put the link below, by the way, so the audience can find it. Jack Wheeler was the guy that went abroad and brought back all the ideas which became the Reagan doctrine mm-hmm. for all the places to push back on the Soviets. And, I mean, he's the closest thing to a real life... Uh, Indiana Jones. Anyway, I digress. What they did, what the what the U.S. working in concert with the Catholic Church and MI6 in mm-hmm. Poland mm-hmm. provided communications equipment to the shipyard workers, the right, uh, the Solidarity Movement, students, farmers, the church, all sorts of uh, communications, and that you know the the means to communicate is um, is essential. Uh, there's a fantastic book called The Dictator's Handbook. Great book. You've read it. Fun, fun, it's small. It's a phenomenal book. Yeah, but book. It's, a, it's a college study on how, an how dictators stay in power. Book. Yeah. So identify who that selectorate is. Who keeps the supreme leader in power? Okay? You, there, obviously, the, the sad thing is, I think the, the, um, the Arab Spring started in Iran in 2009. With the green movement, you know, lots, lots of people in the streets, and the regime was so threatened that they had to call in Lebanese Hezbollah to crack heads because they didn't trust the, the Iranian internal capability anymore. And crickets, nothing from the Obama administration, not we support Iranian freedom, we support your right nothing. Not, obviously no direct help or kinetic help, but not even the equivalent of a tweet or a statement. And then, 
you have the women life freedom protest where women are protesting they want to show their hair or wear a skirt or drink a beer or listen to rock and roll or drive or whatever be normal and be free and you'd think the women's rights groups from around the world would be supporting them but it's again crickets from them crickets from the left um empowering those movements with communications tools with um uh we, we you can make you can make the regime very very vulnerable now there's a lot of stuff before that that i'll tell you about after we're off camera but yeah yeah it's it's um I, I was talking to Pierce two weeks ago, and he asked me the question. I said, "You know, I Iran? What P Iran? Pierce? Pierce Morgan?" And I, oh, yeah. I said, "What he fe what Iran fears is not what you fear. Iran fears the youth. They fear women. They fear um, students. They fear sanctions. They fear economy being bad. Those are some of the things that they fear. The question is, you know, to go about doing that with Iran." Um, you also need the right administration that's willing to go all the way through for that to happen. And that's a lot of work. And yep. you, 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 you do that. Why would Russia or China, whatever your plan is, let's just say your plan is a strong plan, effective one. Why would Russia or China allow you to win? Well, the Iranian people ultimately get a say. There's, what, 85 million people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, look, the, uh, Iran even has a demographic problem themselves. The, the women have voted and closed their wombs. I mean, they went from like five kids per, per woman to like 0.8. Right. It's, they have a severe contraction issue. Right. China has it because of force. They have the reverted pyramid, whatever they call it, inverted pyramid where... Yeah, and, 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 the, and the costs where it's very, very expensive to, for them to try to start a family and job insecurity and all the rest. I'm curious to know what your plan is. I'm very interested to see what your plan is, and, and you and I will uh, we'll talk off camera. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.